Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are on small mates update number four. And um, today we are going to just kind of talk about setting up your macros. Like how do you know where your macros should be? And, and it's really kind of based on your goals. So basically I think most people are in um, they're either trying to lose fat or they're trying to gain muscle. Um, and it, it can be done simultaneously, although it is very, very long. So I think we're going to talk about um, setting up your macros today for like, like a, building phase. a building phase, a building phase. So how do you set your macros up? How do you know? We're going to the expert over here. Yeah, expert, so yeah, we're going to we're gonna let, just let Luke talk. She's the expert, but um, <laughs> this is my opinion. So like, and I would also, I don't know the difference between women and men, um, but if I, if I was going to tell somebody how to set it up for a building phase, this is our cat. <laughs> if, if I was going to, you know, if I was going to set it up for a building phase, the way I do it is um, there's plenty of like calorie um, calculators that you can look up on the internet, basically try and find um, what your uh, base metabolic rate and that what basal, is. Met basal metabolic yeah. rate. So your BMR, yeah. that's what you're looking for. You look a for BMR that, it's going to be like your calories that you need in a day just to stay where you're at and um that's not even maintenance calories your bmr is basically like what you need to survive but you're going to have different calculators are going to give you different variations too because and it's also most of them are going to add in activity so you know i would always recommend if you're calculating your bmr to calculate for don't calculate for zero activity but just like very little but but kind of base it on like um you know if you sit all day at work don't put that you're sick in other words the more active you put you are it's going to raise it so you don't want your base to be way high to start yeah. with so then what i would do is i go right out of the gate and i figure up about a half a gram of fat per pound of your body weight and I figure up you know depending on what you're doing in the gym I mean I don't know if you're if you're advanced um a beginner but if you're shading towards the beginner side of lifting in the gym and training I'd aim for you know um about a gram of protein per pound of body weight if you're natural and uh if you're advanced i would aim for you know maybe all the way up to a gram and a half per pound of body weight and then you fill in all of the rest of your calories with carbs and it's just that simple so if you were going to be like 3800 calories a day and you weighed 200 pounds you'd have 100 grams of fat and you'd have 100 or 250 ish grams of carbs not carbs <laughs> protein <laughs> and then you would fill in all of the rest of the calories that were left with. and i would even recommend i would say figure your protein first <clears throat> um your fat and your carbs can vary a little bit you know and, and i always tell people that you know you hit your protein like your protein is your biggest goal of the day like hit your protein first and if you end up like your fat and your carbs are a little bit like not perfect on target but you're still in your calorie goal then you're okay but you want to hit your protein first like you don't want to have your calorie goal hit but you're 100 grams short on protein like you need the protein to go first and honestly like the older you get you usually need more protein too like I read a research study about women, especially, and the older, and even as you get older, um, you need more, like per pound of body weight. So like, maybe if you're in your 20s or 30s, it might be one gram per pound 
or like 1.25 as you get older it might be more like 1.5 or even a little bit more up but I mean one is a good you know base uh, most people don't get enough protein to begin with so that's kind of a good start but have that kind of be your focus first. and you don't need like if you if you have a sweat whatever your split is your training split is you don't need all the like if you have 450 carbs it just made me think about it when she said you know your carbs and your fat can sort of be interchangeable just a little bit as long as you're in your calorie range but let's say if it's a non-training day and you're normally eating like 100 grams of fat and 400 450 grams of carbs you don't need all those carbs on a non-training day you know you could scale that back on a non-training day easily and um maybe have a little bit extra fat, but not, don't go overboard with it. Don't be like, well, I ate 200 carbs today and I ate 300 grams of fat. It, it doesn't work like that, <clears throat> but you could scale back. Right. You know, and keep in mind that, you know, fat is double the calories per gram of carbs, yeah, if you don't know this. So what we were going to do is just kind of share with you, um, like we use my fitness pal and that's probably one of the easiest um, apps there are to use like even the free version um, so I'm just going to like share share my screen um, okay so if you're looking at your my fitness pal once you set up your account and everything then you know you've got goals you've got profile there are a lot of things that you you know, may or may not want to, to see, like I usually have my clients have their diary shareable so other people can see it. But what did you want to look at? Like, just, just go to the goals. So if you're setting you your like goals, a, show them like a setup. Okay. So like you can edit, um, daily nutritional goals. So like, these are my goals right now. Um, this is like my calories is 23, 14. And I have it like I have the premium version, but normally, you're not going to be able to change your percentages um, in, into like weird numbers. Like it, if I just had the free version, I might be like 40, 25, 35. It, it had, you have to go by like 5%. Um, but you know, that's probably close enough. But then you can, um, I don't know if the premium version lets you do by meals or whatever, but you can also like set if you want to have like a sodium goal or anything like that, you just would edit all these things um, here. And if you go into my fitness pal at the beginning and you put like what your goal is, it will set your macros for you. So you, you probably always want to change these um, because it would usually give you something like 50 to 60% of your um, calories from carbs. And it'll give yeah. you very little protein. It might give you like 10%. So you don't want to use what my fitness pal right. gives you. You want to set up your own. That's why we're like trying to help you out um, with that. Right. Yeah. So what else? Um, So if you look at home, okay, so like up at the top, my thing is kind of blocking, but like if you go to the top and you hit food, then this is going to be like where you would enter all of your stuff in, okay, like for the day. Do you, you have the diary? Can you get to This the, is the diary. Oh, this is the diary. Yeah, if you click it's food. So weird. I never get on the computer version. I'm always on the app version. So. Yeah, so if you're, if you're looking at your phone, it's going to be different, but if you hit food on your computer then it's going to take you to the diary okay and you can see like all the stuff we had popcorn today we went to the movies <laughs> it's our it's our six-year anniversary yes and so we do we do log uh that stuff too yeah. but then you know what i always tell people is like you can get into all kinds of stuff like you can log exercise um if you know you log exercise yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. If you log exercise, it is going to screw your whole thing up because if you log exercise, it's going to take those calories you burned. Well, you can set it to not. And so it's, it's yeah, it, I I didn't know that. But yeah. if, you, if you when I ever logged exercise, just to it, um, it will take those calories 
and basically add them back to your um, your day, your daily goal for calories. And so if, if you don't, if you were like me and didn't know that you can actually turn that off. Yeah, you can, I, yeah, anyway, you can change that. But, you know, what's going to happen is, like you said, if you put in your exercise, I always tell people, if you want to know, like, how many calories or whatever your total is for exercise, like, I, I will put mine in. It actually syncs, like, from my phone. So it will take, like, you know, it'll say, like, I don't know if you can see that, but, like, walking, it'll take that my watch syncs with it but you can have it um you can have it set where it doesn't give you more calories for the calories you burn so like I don't even put my exercise in but it automatically syncs for my watch so you just want to make sure you have it set to not adjust for exercise because it will adjust and try to say oh, well, you burnt 300 calories, so you still have that many calories left, but you don't. Um, you just want to go with what your goals are on your calories first, and don't don't make up for the calories that you burn in exercise, because you're not, you want to be able to see, like, a weekly trend, too. Like, you want to know what's happening yeah. um, week to week with the calories you're eating, and so that's why it's so important to be consistent, too tracking all the little things yeah, all of it. matters like if it has calories you should track it and a lot of people especially women I think when they're like I mean or even men that are mixing food for the kids or whatever I mean a lot of times you get into like tasting <clears throat> things licks bites tastes they all have calories so like just don't do that like I know it's hard <laughs> but you know if you're like me I get us this thing at Christmas time if I make chocolate chip cookies then I just want to eat some of the chocolate chip cookie dough yeah, right that's a law well yes but <laughs> I mean I will eat it but I'm not going to just eat it as I'm making it and not count it like I'm literally going to weigh my chocolate chip cookie dough y'all because if, it's got calories you I mean my if you're going to be if you're going to use my fitness pal you and you don't already so you obviously if you if you're listening to this or watching this and you're you must be pretty new to my fitness style or any of this tracking stuff but here's my other suggestion you absolutely have to get a food scale there's a ton of foods that you'll look up and enter or even scan the barcodes on because you can scan barcodes on stuff and it'll come up with something that's already been put in for that particular food item a lot of them are not written in grams but it'll say like serving sizes like let's say one cup but then beside it, it'll say 39 grams. Like, well, that's, that's like a cereal. But um, pretty sure it's actually Cheerios. But you want to know but the grams. You want to know the grams because, one, nobody guess, nobody's going to use a measuring cup. And everybody's measuring cup is going to be different. Like, it's like a, a tablespoon of peanut butter, y'all. Yeah, I mean, like, a tablespoon of peanut butter is never a tablespoon of peanut butter. You give me a tablespoon and tell me to measure out peanut butter and it is going to be a heap of peanut butter. So, I mean, but that's the whole point is nobody, nobody thinks that what they're eating is actually how much it really is. Like, oh, no, I, I just had a medium apple because that's, that's another thing. Being an apple, it says medium apple. Well, what, how much does a medium apple weigh? So you've got to get a food scale and use it. I mean, use it for, we have like four of them. We may even have more than that. We've got, we've got two out right now you make running. You sound like we're now, kind of crazy. We are kind of crazy, <laughs> but you got to be crazy. So we've got, we've got two out. She has a rechargeable one that's really stopped working, but we kept it because she didn't want to throw it away. So it's, it's also in the kitchen. I've got one in my work truck because <laughs> I, yeah, weigh stuff out. Um, so, I mean, cause I do a lot of travel in my work truck. So, you know, I've got, I've got a scale there, um, but you've got to weigh everything. Cause I mean, and look for things when you, when you search the database, let me, let me come back to share my screen. Cause I'm going to yeah. show you, because like, this is what I always do. And a lot of times when I try to teach this to my clients, um, it, it doesn't show up like very well. Okay. So like, let's say that I'm going to go and add a food 
whatever it may be. So I'm going to add a food for today. And let's say I'm going to search for an apple, right? So like if you can find something that is USDA, it's usually pretty good. But what I always do is when I search for something, I always put a, a little G at the end because that's how I'm going to measure the weight, right? So if I put apple and a G in search, then it's going to probably give me something um okay so here's just you know and you could put the type if you want to but say like here's an apple and if i clicked on that then if i come over here hopefully it's going to give me a one right so that's saying that a large might be 242 grams but let's say i don't have 242 grams so i'm going to change it to one gram and then let's say i had like a hundred now there's one over there already that's got a hundred but let's see what it says so you can just hit nutrition mm -hmm. info so it's got 100 has like 54 calories and you kind of want to make sure that it has other stuff put in too yeah. but like this other one here is 100 grams 52 calories right so one thing you can do is if you can find anything and i don't see anything on here but there's um there's a little green like shield on the left yeah with the check mark. and that means it's verified so that means you're pretty good with that so like what's something that that we've done that's like i just verified today that I, that I looked up that was verified it was oh like whole wheat pasta i think there was a verified whole wheat pasta cooked okay whole wheat pasta i, I can look at my phone to see what's on there Cooked. Uh, do you put grams? I always, no. I always put the G. I look for the ones. I never look for G. I always do the one that's because I don't think the grams one had it, but I don't even remember now. I don't know. Okay, well, I know that like I'm pretty sure like an egg. Was, oh, you know what? Um, Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, there's all the check marks. So here we've got like an egg that's verified. So you can see all of these like are around 71 calories, right? So you've got like one large. And then like if you come over here, it will also let you pick like medium, whatever. But and like an egg, you can pretty much just go with an egg. Yeah, you don't have to like get egg. into like weighing that. Large eggs will weigh about 50 grams a piece right so this one right here says 50 grams and so you're pretty good with that but like if you look for this little um green symbol with the check then then you're pretty good um you know with knowing that it's accurate but like sometimes you can enter something in and somebody has just put in like calories and they don't yeah. put any of the nutrition None information fat, you got to make sure it's there because then at the end of the day you'll be like well, I'm like 50 grams of protein short, but it says I'm like 400 calories over. Well, yeah. because somebody just put the calories in and didn't put any of the macro information. You'll also notice, <clears throat> you'll get to the end of the day, you very rarely, when you have, you have zeros across the board left. So you've, you've completed every single one of them. You didn't go over on anything. It'll say negative 200 car or negative 200 calories. It's just, or like it'll tell you you have 30 left or it'll say yeah. you're like 50 under or it's just 20 over where people have put in things wrong or the calories don't line up it, don't worry so much about what the calorie count says on the side worry about what your macro count says yeah i mean and you know <laughs> sometimes that's why it's really good if you can find the verified ones because like sometimes it's not always right um but make sure like anytime you have something that's packaged scan the barcode if you know if possible and make sure that it's the same because like if you just type everything in and you have eaten something from a package it's going to be hard but like you know pasta for example we just weigh out cooked you know i'm not going to measure out the dry pasta because i'm cooking a whole pot a pot like a yeah. whole lot together um so you know those are kind of things that you need to remember um Oh, and when you go to scan labels now, now a lot of companies have started putting QR uh, barcodes near the UPC barcode and your camera on your phone will recognize the QR instead of recognizing the barcode. It's so dumb. Yeah, so so you're, cover it it'll, yeah, so cover it up, cover up the QR with your thumb. Otherwise you'll scan and it'll just say, 
barcode not found or not recognized. And then you'll scan it again and it'll say the same thing again. It'll say you, invalid. Yeah, invalid barcode. That's what it says. And you'll you'll be driving yourself nuts until you figure out that it's scanning the QR code that's not even in the middle of the camera frame. It's off to the side and you're st and it's still scanning that versus and sometimes it'll do that anyway. <laughs> like if you have a food that's like um, for example, like <clears throat> if you get something from the fresh market or you know. Uh, something that like a bakery or deli has packaged and put a label on a lot of times it won't recognize that yeah. at all so you have to like type that in um you know because it'll say invalid because they just it's just kind of like it's the their, gym, their code for the, for the weight it's usually like if, if yeah. it's something that gets a label based on weight like from the bakery or the deli right. like she's saying it's the computer up front when you scan through to check out is reading that as how much the price is and that's all that it says basically right um so as far as a barcode is concerned so if you you can't scan that like she said you gotta you gotta literally type that in and it'll be in there and it's it's <laughs> like it's kind of a lot harder when you first start um you know until you kind of get down what you're doing <laughs> and it seems like very tedious like to begin with but if you can generally like stick to the same foods like or the same like what i'm saying is that if you eat 30 different foods a day and you do it every single day it's going to be a pain in the butt right but if i eat every day i generally have like i don't know some tomatoes or something then it's already there and yeah. it will save your stuff like under the <clears throat> meal so like things that if you generally have like three or four different things for breakfast it's not hard once you get them in you can actually create meals mm -hmm. on my fitness pal if you, you want to recipes. you can do recipes yeah. you can enter stuff in like that it makes it a whole lot simpler but like a lot of a lot of people i know like just become overwhelmed because they have so many things to track but like honestly it's kind of an awakening too like holy crap, what am I, you know, what am I eating? You know, I, there's all these things that I'm having to enter in, scan, but you know, that it's, it's an awareness tool too. Like yeah. it makes you it realize. You accountable for what you're doing. Cause I mean, I used my fitness pal for three years. And then after my third competition, I quit using my fitness pal. I, I didn't quit using it. I just quit logging my food. And I did like one meal. And I like, yeah, no, <laughs> I, then I didn't even log yeah. anything. It was, um, yeah. And I'm going to tell you that, that that accountability is huge because I put on a giant amount of fat. You know, I had no idea what I was eating, but I guarantee you almost daily I was probably eating 200 plus grams of fat. It was, it's crazy. And I probably wasn't even getting my protein. I mean, for a large portion of that, I bet you two years, I, I did that. And then the third year I started tracking again. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good accountability tool. You really need it. You, you gotta know what you're doing. <clears throat> I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole like, mindful eating is good. It's a great thing, but Honestly, I 100% believe that if you have goals in the bodybuilding arena whatsoever, whether it's muscle gain or fat loss or like, you know, you've got a seasonal approach to things like if you have like a building season or an off season or a competition season or cutting or whatever, you can eat mindfully. But honestly, if you've got physique goals, you really need to know where you are. Like, and this is what I said to him also. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't log, you don't know what you're getting. And then you really don't know what to do when you need to make changes because you, you yeah. can't just make changes when you don't know where you were to begin with. So like, you know, for me, it goes through seasons and like, he's back to this same thing too, because he just came off of a competition. And so now his goal is to gain lean but to not put on so much body yeah. fat. So you have to pay attention. Protein is super important, 
like whether you're building or cutting, you know, actually when you cut your protein is probably going to go a little bit higher um, because it's more filling and your carbs are generally going to come down when you're, um, you know, trying to get leaner. But like for him, that's the main goal was like just really being mindful, um, you know, so he doesn't put on the amount of yeah, fat that he did. Me. It's Before. been, my competition was on the 24th of October, and here it is, December 5th, and we did my measurements this morning, so I weigh 200 pounds, but. Oh, yeah, I'll put his, um, um I'll put his pictures, <laughs> yeah, I'll put his progress pictures in here at the end of this video, um, <laughs> but I'm, I've only gained 1% body fat from my show, so I've got a ways to go, body fat wise, I wanted to stay between 10 and 12 this time um versus 21 and <laughs> and um my progress so pictures will up, be next week i'm only up I'm, by I'm one off. you're putting it off putting them off we were supposed to do it yesterday which would have been a saturday today's a sunday um and we didn't i'll do my check-in next week so i've already started <laughs> like um i'm one week into prep she's a week i'm in. one week into prep but i have not um not done my updated pictures yet so i'm gonna do that next week and then that'll actually be a month i think since the last time i did them and but now will be more often too since we should see something coming down um something coming down each week so my first week if anybody cares my first week I know y'all okay if you've watched this far <laughs> yeah if you're you, already you here. must care what's going on so um <laughs> so in my first week i uh, lost about three pounds which is a little bit more than ideal like ideally you want to lose like one to two maybe yeah, per week it's, but know. at the beginning your carbs are are probably cut so much that like you're you're kind of um you know it's a lot of water you'll probably lose too. some water weight and also your cardio is up we can do a prep video someday when i figure it out <laughs> uh, i'm not good at it yet what do you mean well because i haven't done any other prep yet oh. well anyway so that's where we are right now what was yours what was, what was your weight over the past week any any changes over the past week oh uh, yeah i went up by about a half a pound yeah. Just, just 0. 0.6, 0. 0.6. So that's pretty good. I yeah. mean, you know, I think I, when you're trying to gain lean, you really probably only want to be like, and honestly, y'all, you're gonna your scale's gonna fluctuate yeah, a lot anyway. So, your scale's but, not gonna don't I mean, pay attention so much to what it says on a day to day basis. Yeah, but like you know, for a week, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I'm like, so since my competition, so the day of my competition, I weighed 185 pounds. And I was at, I, I, I didn't get down as lean as I wanted to, but I got down to like 6.4, I think, something like that. So between October 24th and now, we had a 10,000 calorie day challenge. I had, um, I we had Thanksgiving. Oh, we haven't posted that. Yeah. But it, so I had a 10,000 calorie <laughs> day. Um, and then I had, we had Thanksgiving and plenty of eating around Thanksgiving and then after Thanksgiving with leftovers. And I, my goal is like 3,800 calories right now. And I've been over 3,800 calories most days, you know, and uh, so I weigh 200 pounds. You gotta remember most of that, if I only am 1% body fat more, most of that is going to be, you know, just I've filled back out. I didn't, I wasn't filled out getting on the stage so I mean, that's that's 15 pounds 16 pounds um, that's a lot of glycogen in there yeah that's a lot <laughs> because he didn't have a lot of carbs um, like you know so you'd be eating four thousand four thousand plus calories a day and only put on a half a pound in a week or only put on one percent body fat in over a month but keep in mind y'all like y'all most people watching this video probably don't train like you because he <laughs> is it's a whole nother level in the gym so like you got to keep in mind that like your calories are um you know your calories 
or, and, and how you gain or lose. I mean, there's going to be a lot based on activity, but I'm telling you, yeah. like, you, your calories are the key thing into like what your physique is. Mm-hmm. And like a calorie is not just a calorie, like, because I can have like protein and carbs are the same calories per gram. But if I have the right amount of protein, my physique is going to be a whole lot different than if I had those same calories in carbs. It is going to be a huge difference in the amount of lean muscle that you can carry and maintain. And most of the time, people just simply look at calories and think it's like, it is a matter of calories in versus calories out if you're trying to like lose or gain. But what those, you know, what your physique looks like matters. Like, where the macros are coming from matters in what you look like yeah. and it I, and we said it kind of like when we were talking about setting up your macros like initially if you've never done this before um imagine if you've made it this far none of you watching this far have ever done like macro setups and stuff but i'll just spin you around there Get um, my chair. <laughs> it's my arm rest so if you um if you set it up, let's say, you, you know, you're, you're all of your uh, figuring on the calculators that are available on the web and you have your carbs and protein and fat set up on my fitness pal, say you're at 3,500 calories. And that's, that's what it says you need to be at to be like in a little bit of a surplus and, you know, give it like, give that like a week and a half to two weeks. Don't do anything dumb. 10 unless to 14 days. Unless it's drastic, unless there is a monstrous drastic change, unless after a week of that, you've like lost three or four pounds, or after a week of that, you've gained like five to six pounds. That's that's a pretty good estimate. I yeah, think. I mean, 10 to 14 but, days, like, because you're going to have fluctuation. Days, yeah, you're. And like things are going to level out. It's like it, because if you've been doing one thing yeah. and you drastically switch, you can have a drastic change like on the scale but it doesn't mean you're going to stay there like when I I think it was a couple of weeks ago I said I had bumped my calories back up I mean I think I gained like five pounds in a week but 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 like then it comes back down if you go like get to the end of that 14 days and you've been looking at your weight you know every couple of days you weigh yourself and you notice that you're trending down or you're trending up and let's say your goal was just to like you're trending up too much or you're trending down or you're just flat and stayed the same weight you know then you can adjust your calories you know don't just sit there at the same calorie rate or don't get to the end of your calories and keep eating at the end of the day because you've been losing weight and and, you know you're not tracking that or or what you know just you can it's very fluid. You can cha- just change everything around a little bit, you know, little tweaks here, little tweaks there on stuff and get to where the scale and your macro setup and the way you feel and how you're training in the gym all feel good, you know, for what you're doing. All right. So y'all, if you have questions, drop them in the comment box. We'll talk more about this later. <laughs> I'm sure we have gone on long enough. So um, be sure you subscribe if you have not already. And thank you for being with us on our journey. Yeah, thanks.